Today on Nerd Out, Block and Transaction Propagation. Hey everybody, welcome back to Nerd Out, the show where we take a look at Cardano when we, we break it down, but we don't dumb it down. Uh, today we're taking a look at block and transaction propagation. First, a quick Alonzo Blue update. Not much has happened this week on, on Alonzo Blue. We did have uh, the very first transaction go through that was dealing with an actual Plutus contract um, that was done on the IOG side, so we didn't get too much visibility into that, into that but a little bit happened. Uh, we're kind of waiting on a new node version. And once we get the new node version, we'll be able to do a bit more on that network. We also brought on some of our new buddies. Uh, I brought on uh, Holger from Ada Stake Pool. He's also one of the uh, main tech guys from the Liquid Finance Group. So the Liquid guys are now in on Alonzo Blue, which is good for, for that project. Uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the main presentation from today. So we're talking about block and transaction propagation, how those transactions make it into blocks and get around the network. So first thing that happens is your wallet um, makes a transaction and signs it. So uses your keys, signs a transaction, and then locally behind Daedalus, it's running this software called Cardano Node. That's the same Cardano Node that all the stake pool operators, anybody that's uh, talking on the Cardano network has an instance of Cardano node somewhere. So even in Yoroi, the light client, on their servers, somewhere they're running Cardano node. Now eventually we'll want to have other implementations other than Haskell over here, but right now we just have the one and only Haskell Cardano node. So that transaction makes it into Cardano node. So Cardano node takes it and it puts it into something called its mempool. This is just a spot in memory where it holds all the various transactions it's seen. So other nodes that are connected to your node uh, will ask it, hey, you seen any, any new transactions lately? Your node says, sure have. Do you want them to? And their node says, yeah, I'd like to have those particular transactions that I don't have in my mempool. And then your node says, here you go. And so your, your transaction then gets passed around to all the other nodes on the network and then eventually everybody's mempool looks roughly the same. I mean their transactions are flying all the time so they won't be identical but they'll be pretty close to identical. So then eventually we have the slot lottery happening. You can watch the other videos I have for that and there's a stake pool out there that's also running Cardano node and it wins the lottery and decides that it's going to mint a new block on the blockchain. And so that node then takes a look at the mempool and loads all of those transactions into a block until either the mempool is completely empty or we've hit the maximum block size, which I believe is about 65k currently. And so then that stake pool then takes that block and puts it at the tip of its own blockchain. It doesn't do anything with it yet other than put it on the blockchain. And then it takes any of those transactions that are in the block and removes them from its own mempool. So how does that block get out to the network? So Cardano is a pull based network, so it does not push it out to the network. That would cause you know, issues where you could exhaust resources from other people's machine. It's a pull based network. So other nodes are continually asking your node and the stake pool, hey, have you seen any blocks lately? And then the stake pool says, sure, I've got one more than you, it looks like. Here's the header information and the hash of that, that new block. And so then the, the other nodes say, hey, that looks like a valid block. I validated that, that hash. Um, do you mind sending me the whole block? And so then the stake pool says, here you go. And then that process repeats. And again, the whole network agrees that this new block is valid. And then at that point, all the nodes on the network, once they have that new valid block at the tip of their blockchain, they remove all of those transactions in the block from the mempool so that when the next block arrives, um, 
they won't the stake the next stake pull in line will not try to re-add the same transactions to the next block. And that, my friends, is how transactions and blocks make it around the network. Later, nerds.